The darkly beautiful B.B. Daniels will always be an important link in the Harold Lloyd film chain for not only appearing opposite him in more films than any other co-star, but also as one of his most significant love affairs. Virginia Daniels, nicknamed B.B. almost from birth, was born on January 14, 1901 in Dallas, Texas, the only child of Danny and Phyllis Griffin Daniels, professional actors with their own stock company. By the age of four, Bebe was a frequent actor in her parents' company, and by the age of seven, she made her motion picture debut with an appearance in Seelig's A Common Enemy. Bebe was just 14 years old when she auditioned for the part of Harold Lloyd's leading lady. Although they had been looking for a blonde, Bebe impressed both Hal Roach and Harold Lloyd so much that she was soon offered a contract. Even at her young age, Bibi had a certain intensity and vivaciousness of manner that was present both on and off the screen. Over the next four years, Bibi Daniels appeared in 144 Lloyd films, starting with A Foozle at the Tea Party and ending with Captain Kidd's Kids. In the midst of those four years, she and Harold found themselves drawn to one another, and despite an eight-year difference in ages, the pair fell deeply in love and became one of young Hollywood's most attractive couples. It is generally believed that had career ambitions not come between them, their romance would have resulted in marriage. In 1919, Bebe accepted a lucrative offer from famous players Lasky Studios to star in films for Cecil B. DeMille. Bibi may have been hoping Harold would try to stop her from leaving, but in the end, he did not. Bibi and Harold felt the loss of each other's company personally as well as professionally, but over the next few years, they would both rise to major stardom, Harold as one of the three kings of silent comedy and Bibi as one of the queens of Paramount. In 1963, Bibi suffered a crippling stroke. She rebounded to some extent, but never fully recovered. On March 16, 1971, a mere eight days after Harold Lloyd lost his battle with cancer, B.B. Daniels died at the age of 70. In spite of the fact that she appeared with Harold Lloyd in just one film, Movie Crazy, in 1932, Constance Cummings remains one of his most memorable leading ladies. She was born Constance Cummings Halverstadt, on May 15, 1910, in Seattle, Washington. Early training as a dancer led to work on the stage, and by 1926, she was touring as Diane in the popular romance, Seventh Heaven. Cummings' film debut came in 1930 with a role in the Howard Hawks-directed crime thriller, The Criminal Code. It was the first of five films she would make that year alone, working with such legends as Walter Houston, Robert Young, and Boris Karloff. In 1932, Cummings was cast as Harold's leading lady in Movie Crazy, a film considered by many to be Harold's finest effort in talking pictures. Cummings' handling of her dual roles was performed with precision and style, making her a magnificent addition to the lovely roster of Lloyd leading ladies. A year after making Movie Crazy, Constance Cummings married noted British playwright Ben W. Levy and moved to London where she became an even bigger star on both the stage and the screen. In 1974, she was honored for her many contributions to the arts by being made a commander of the British Empire by Queen Elizabeth II. Americans had a chance to reacquaint themselves with her when she starred in the highly praised drama Wings on Broadway in 1979 and won a Tony Award for her performance. One of a rare class in the Lloyd Arena, that of actor and director, Fred Neumeyer came a long way from very humble yet diverse roots. Fred Richard Neumeyer was born on August 9, 1888, in Central City, Colorado. He and Harold spent part of their school days together in a little red brick schoolhouse in Central City. Fred was five years older than Harold, but the school apparently had many grades in one room. That's how small it was. Neumeyer's initial career aspirations were sports-related. He wanted to be a baseball pitcher. He quickly made the majors, pitching for the Philadelphia Athletics, managed at that time by the legendary Connie Mack. However, just as his career took off, Fred injured his arm, ending a promising career in its infancy. Fred had come out to California from Pennsylvania, initially to recover his arm strength. That not having happened, 
he reunited with his old Colorado pal, Harold Lloyd, who invited him out to the studio in early July 1916, quickly offering him a place as a character actor in the Rollin Company. As an actor, Neumeyer appeared in 67 Lloyd films, both Lonesome Luke's and Glass characters. Shortly after the end of World War I, Hal Roach suggested that Fred switch to directing. Although he professed no knowledge of directing, Roach had faith in him, and together they co-directed Number Please in 1920 and Now or Never in 1921. On his own, Fred directed Among Those Present, Never Weaken, A Sailor Made Man, Grandma's Boy, and Dr. Jack. He also co-directed with Sam Taylor, Safety Last, Why Worry, Girl Shy, Hot Water, and The Freshman. Fred Neumeyer died on April 24, 1967, at the age of 78. As the director of some of the greatest Lloyd films ever made, his talent will continue to be celebrated each time a Lloyd film is threaded into a projector and thrown upon a welcome screen. One of the most enduring and beloved of the stock company actors associated with Harold Lloyd, Gus Leonard made a name for himself not only in Harold's films, but also with Our Gang and Laurel and Hardy as well. He was born Amade Théodore Gaston Le Ronde on September 8, 1855 in Marseille, France. He and his parents moved to California when he was a small boy. He began a youthful career on stage in San Francisco around 1860, joining Tony Pastor's first road show. Now known as Gus Leonard, he continued in the vaudeville circuit, developing a successful drunken waiter act and performing across the United States and abroad. Leonard entered films, joining Harold Lloyd's unit with the Rollin Film Company in July 1916. Much like fellow Lloyd player Wallace Howe, Leonard was extremely versatile and often played more than one role in a film. One time in Bumping Into Broadway, he performed a most unique cross-dressing role as a female desperate for a man. Gus Leonard appeared in 83 Lloyd films, including roles in A Sailor Made Man, Grandma's Boy, Safety Last, The Freshman, The Kid Brother, Speedy, Movie Crazy, and The Milky Way. Famously, he appeared in two classic Our Gang shorts, Mush and Milk in 1933 and The Lucky Corner in 1936. In between these stints, he graced Laurel and Hardy's Babes in Toyland in 1934. His final film, in which Leonard played a concierge, was the Nelson Eddy Jeanette MacDonald melodramatic operetta, Maytime, in 1937. Gus Leonard died at his Los Angeles home on March 27, 1939, at the age of 83, after a long illness. One of the greatest figures in motion picture comedy, and the man considered the most influential in the development of the career of Harold Lloyd, Hal Roach was born on January 14, 1892, in Elmira, New York. Somewhere in the period of 1912 to 1913, Roach came into a sum of money that enabled him to establish his own film company, which he named the Rollin Film Company. The first actor he engaged was Harold Lloyd. After a bumpy start, Roach's company began to take off with the rising success of Harold Lloyd and his comedy incarnations from the initial Willy Work to Lonesome Luke and finally what became his signature persona, the so-called Glass character. Throughout his films, Lloyd was supported by a top-notch cast of talented players that included Snub Pollard, B.B. Daniels and others who became familiar friends to weekly audiences. The relationship between Roach and Lloyd was a somewhat stormy one, with numerous struggles over power, money, and creative control. Yet, in spite of their frequent disagreements, the two remained great comrades, each instinctively aware that there was a genuine friendship between them. In 1919, largely owing to the burgeoning popularity of Harold Lloyd, Roach was able to begin construction on a new and expansive studio facility in the bustling community of Culver City in West Los Angeles. It was also at this time that Roach began planning a new series revolving entirely around a group of children to be known as the Our Gang Comedies. Ironically, the birth of Our Gang led to the end of Lloyd's professional association with Roach. 
The producer spent so much time on Our Gang that Lloyd felt that his films were being ignored. Why Worry was the last Lloyd picture to be made under the Roach banner. Hal Roach died on November 2nd, 1992, just two months shy of his 101st birthday, a life that not only spanned an entire century, but saw the motion picture rise from its infancy to the cultural phenomenon it has become today. John Ossin was in only one Harold Lloyd film, Why Worry, in 1922, but he made such an indelible impression that he remains one of the most instantly recognizable supporting players in any of Lloyd's many films. Ironically, Ossin was not the first choice for the prime role of the giant Colosso. Originally, another circus performer, 8 foot 7 inch George Auger, was signed for the part, but tragically died just before filming began. After Auger's sudden death, the production scrambled to find another giant, but filling such big shoes seemed a daunting task indeed. Just as luck would have it, however, the Los Angeles Examiner did an article on a shoe company having to fill an order for an enormous pair of shoes, size 20 to be exact, with each shoe weighing more than 20 pounds. Immediately, the production contacted the shoe manufacturer, who revealed that the pair was made for the 24-year-old John Ossin, who worked as a performer for the C.A. Wortham Circus. As it turned out, the Norwegian-born Ossin was even bigger than Auger had been, standing an impressive 8 foot 9 and 1 quarter inches tall and topping the scales at 460 pounds. Ossin was quickly put under contract by Hal Roach and made a most memorable co-star to Harold Lloyd in the popular comedy. After Why Worry, Ossin went on to work in several other pictures for Roach, including the 1928 Laurel and Hardy comedy Should Married Men Go Home, as well as a 1928 installment of the Our Gang series. He also later appeared in Charlie Chan at the Circus in 1936. Sadly, that same year, Ossin became ill, losing 160 pounds all too rapidly. His health further declined until his death on August 1, 1938, in Mendocino, California. A talented character actress with decades of roles to her credit on both the stage and the screen, Josephine Crowell may best be remembered for playing Harold Lloyd's perfectly awful mother-in-law in Hot Water. Born Josephine Bonaparte Crowell Lacroix in Nova Scotia, Canada, she had a long career in films, dating back to an appearance in D.W. Griffith's classic, The Birth of a Nation, in 1915. She appeared in hundreds of films, mostly in the dramatic ranks. However, she could not resist the opportunity to work with Harold Lloyd when asked to. As the prototypical mother-in-law from hell, Crowell was superb in her humorous nuances as she slowly but surely made her son-in-law's life more miserable by the real. Her dramatic background, no doubt, made her all the funnier as the prohibitionist sleepwalking mother of two adults and a five-year-old boy. After her memorable appearance in Hot Water, Miss Crowell was featured in the Edward Everett Horton series of two reelers produced by Lloyd in 1927-28. She later went on to appear in one more Lloyd film in a brief part as a taxi passenger whose cab winds up connected via rope to a runaway horse car in Speedy. Only failing health ended Crowell's career. After several years under the care of the Actors Fund of America, Josephine Crowell died on July 27, 1932 at the Brunswick home in Amityville, New York. Jobina Ralston appeared in only six features with Harold Lloyd, yet she is beloved and revered by Lloyd fans, many who consider her his finest foil. She was born Jobina Ralston on November 21, 1900, in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. A tomboy as a youngster, Joby married quite young. At age 16, she wed neighbor Johnny Campbell. Their happiness was short-lived, and they divorced in the late teens. It was soon thereafter that she left her hometown to try for an acting career. 
Her first screen work was in the Cuckoo Comedies opposite Bobby Burns. After this came stage work, then a return to the silver screen in such films as 1922's The Call of Home and The Three Must Get Theirs. Soon after this came a contract from Hal Roach and varied roles in One Reelers. In 1923, Harold Lloyd married his leading lady, Mildred Davis, who promptly retired to star in his home. This left Lloyd without a female lead. From a number of hopeful candidates, Jobina was chosen for the plum position. Joby remembered her first work with Lloyd in the April 1928 issue of Photoplay, stating, I was so scared, I heard my teeth chatter. No doubt Harold heard them too. After her initial fright had passed, she and Harold went on to become good friends and appeared in six films together, beginning with Why Worry in 1923. This was followed by Girl Shy and Hot Water, both in 1924, the Freshman in 1925, For Heaven's Sake in 1926, and The Kid Brother in 1927. Jobina Ralston took her acting career seriously, so much so that after The Kid Brother, she made the decision to leave the Lloyd Company, going to work for Cecil B. DeMille at the munificent salary of $1,000 a week. After suffering a series of strokes, Jobina Ralston died on January 22, 1967, at the Motion Picture Country House in Woodland Hills, California. She was 66 years old. She was Harold Lloyd's leading lady in 15 films, then took on an even more prominent role as his leading lady in real life. Mildred Davis, known to friends and family as Mid, remains the woman who was closest to Harold Lloyd for the longest period of time. Born on February 22, 1901 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Mildred Davis spent most of her childhood in the Pacific Northwest community of Tacoma, Washington. While on an extended holiday to Los Angeles, Mid decided to try her luck with the movies. Although lacking in any experience, Mid's youthful beauty and charming personality landed her a minor role in Metro's the Weaver of Dreams in 1918. It was for her next role, however, a leading part opposite Bryant Washburn in the comedy All Wrong that would create the break she had been dreaming of. By the time All Wrong was released on June 1, 1919, B.B. Daniels had defected to work for Cecil B. DeMille, leaving Harold Lloyd in immediate need of a new leading lady. After seeing Mildred's film, both Hal Roach and Lloyd thought they had found the perfect replacement. Mid was pretty, almost doll-like in her delicate beauty, and could handle comedy well. But securing her for a contract proved harder than expected. By the time Roach and Lloyd decided to pursue Mid for the Lloyd series, she had returned to school in Tacoma. The men finally located her and requested that she return to Hollywood to test with Lloyd. Mid began shooting her debut with Harold in From Hand to Mouth on June 21, 1919, and over the next few years, she would appear in more than a dozen more Lloyd comedies. Mid was an immediate hit with Lloyd fans, and she proved a popular foil at a time when his status amongst cinema's mirthmakers was on the rise. After the filming of Safety Last wrapped on November 29, 1922, Mid's contract came to an end. Harold, who had been dating Mid rather steadily for almost two years, may have surprised even himself by suddenly proposing marriage. Mid agreed, and the two were married on Saturday, February 10, 1923, at St. John's Episcopal Church in Los Angeles. Mid was, to all who knew her, a delightful person with a keen sense of humor and an infectious giggle. Her home base was Green Acres, where she and Harold raised their three children, Gloria, Peggy, and Harold Jr. After Harold retired from filmmaking, Mildred accompanied her husband on the many trips he made as imperial potentate of the shrine. Mildred and Harold toured the world as Harold captured their travels in his photography. During World War II, she worked tirelessly as president of her local Red Cross. Back home at Green Acres, Mid loved entertaining, hosting numerous parties and dinners for their many friends. Although Harold and Mid were often off pursuing their own interests, the tenderness they felt for each other never waned. In the last 20 years of her life, Mildred helped raise her granddaughter, Suzanne. Mildred's marriage of 46 years to Harold Lloyd was one of the longest in show business. She was devoted to her husband.
When Mildred Davis Lloyd died on August 18, 1969, Harold was overwhelmed. I've lost my bride, he said. Mildred Davis remains a significant figure in Lloyd history, not only as his leading lady through his most significant professional and personal evolutions, but as his wife of 46 years, a woman who, through both frivolity and difficulty, remained by Harold's side. Longtime partner of Harold Lloyd and later a star of his own series, Snub Pollard was an extremely talented comic, yet one strongly ingrained in the style of his era. Pollard's reliance on the old style method of using physical quirkiness as a means of humor ultimately may have cost him a longer career, but his fall may have aided in the rise of Harold Lloyd. Harold Hope Town Fraser was born on November 9, 1889, in Melbourne, Australia. His theatrical debut was as part of the Pollard Lilliputian Opera Company, an Australian vaudeville troupe which came to the United States and promptly disbanded. Most of its members adopted Pollard as their new surnames, an exception was another future Lloyd stalwart, Alf Goulding. Pollard was a member of Hal Roach's unit when he was directing at SNA, where he worked with Gilbert M., Bronco Billy Anderson, and Charles Chaplin. When Roach left SNA and formed the Rollin Film Company, Pollard soon followed and gained stature as second banana in the bunch led by Lloyd. The famously mustachioed snub Pollard was in 149 Lloyd films between 1915 and 1919, and when Lloyd had his accident, Pollard was given his own series. The look of the Lloyd comedies after Pollard left took on a whole new maturity. As the Lloyd comedies evolved, the fun was found less in the look of the performers and much more in the story. That story be the primary focus from which all mirth grew was a mature evolution and a tremendous quality of the later Lloyd films. The first comedy in Pollard's new series for Roach, aptly entitled Start Something, was released on October 26, 1919. For a time, actress Marie Moschini did double duty, shuttling back and forth between sets working for both Lloyd and Pollard until eventually settling in as Snub's leading lady. Pollard also appeared in a number of Our Gang and Laurel and Hardy shorts, including One Good Turn in 1931. With the advent of sound came a demotion to bit player, and he supported the Three Stooges in the 1940s. Snub recreated his own past in such biographical essays as The Perils of Pauline in 1947 and opposite James Cagney in The Man of a Thousand Faces in 1957. Harry Snub Pollard died on January 19, 1962 of complications resulting from colon cancer surgery at the age of 73. Perhaps the most learned and erudite of the Lloyd writing and directorial staff, Sam Taylor made the most of a very successful career. Samuel J. Taylor was born on August 13, 1895 in New York City, receiving his Bachelor of Arts degree from Fordham University. In 1915, he joined the Salem Company as an editor, title writer, and scenarist. While there, he worked on the wildly popular Ham and Bud comedies. He later worked for Universal before serving his country in World War I. Then in March 1921, the announcement was made that Taylor had joined the Hal Roach Studios. His first assignment was Now or Never, for which he wrote the scenario and contributed gags. A year later, in April 1922, Taylor was signed to a long-term contract with Roach and Lloyd and would collaborate on the scripts for the next six Lloyd films. He would co-direct with Fred Neumeyer some of the finest Lloyd features, including Safety Last, Why Worry, Girl Shy, and Hot Water. In 1925, Lloyd's contract with Pathé expired and Lloyd signed with Paramount. Taylor was signed to direct what would be the first Lloyd Paramount production for heaven's sake. After completing For Heaven's Sake, Taylor decided to go independent. Taylor and Lloyd reunited for Harold's most unique sound offering, The Cat's Paw, in 1934. However, Taylor was so run down and exhausted during production that Harold sent Sam home for a two-day rest. Upon Sam's arrival home, Mrs. Olive Taylor was presented with a note that read, that long skinny gentleman in your home is your husband, in case you don't recognize him. 
Taylor's final directorial credit was the 1944 Laurel and Hardy comedy, Nothing But Trouble. Afterwards, he became a Hollywood publicist and writer, authoring a mystery novel, The Man With My Face. When it was made into a film in 1951, Taylor co-authored the script. Sam Taylor died after suffering a heart attack on March 6, 1958, in Santa Monica, California. He was one of Lloyd's most talented directors and could have risen to untold heights in the sound era. Sadly, however, Ted Wilde's life ended just as his career was rising. Wilde was born on December 16, 1890, in New York City. His career in show business began on the musical stage, playing comedy parts as early as 1912. He graduated from Columbia University, specializing in dramatic construction. In 1922, he went west, joining the Harold Lloyd Corporation as a gag man and performed in that capacity beginning with Girl Shy in 1924 through For Heaven's Sake two years later. Wilde had co-scripted The Kid Brother, and by 1926, he was named co-director on the film along with Lewis Milestone. When Milestone left due to contractual problems, Wilde became sole director of what would become Lloyd's 1927 masterpiece. That same year, he was loaned out to First National Studios to direct Babe Comes Home, starring baseball legend and soon-to-be Lloyd co-star, George Herman, Babe Ruth. After his expert handling of the kid brother, Wilde was assigned to direct Speedy in 1928, Lloyd's final silent film. The tremendous success of Speedy earned for Wilde a nomination for a 1927-1928 Academy Award for Best Comedy Direction, the only time such an award was ever given. Ironically, he lost out to Lewis Milestone, whom he had replaced on The Kid Brother. After his time with Lloyd, Wilde went on to other assignments, including the 1930 Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Loretta Young vehicle, Loose Ankles. By all accounts, it appeared that Ted Wilde had a brilliant career ahead of him in talking pictures. But while shooting his next production, Playing the Market with Charlie Murray, Wilde suffered a paralytic stroke. Ted Wilde died at his Los Angeles home on December 17, 1929, just one day after his 39th birthday. He was one of the most innovative, creative, and talented of the cinematic pioneers. In many ways, Walter Lundeen was one of the most influential cameramen of all time. He was born on April 20th, 1892 in Illinois to Swedish-born parents and was exactly one year older than Harold. In the earliest days of the Rollin Film Company, James Crosby handled the camera work. Soon thereafter, however, Walter Lundeen joined Rollin, and there he was to remain, photographing virtually every Lloyd film from the 1915 Lonesome Luke One Reelers through the Cat's Paw in 1934. Without question, Lundeen made Lloyd look as good as he did with a combination of technological skill and innovative experimentation. Harold always appreciated Lundeen's fine work and was quite generous about giving him due credit, often pointing out that Lundeen took as much of a risk as Lloyd did in the making of his thrill comedies. During the making of Safety Last in 1922, when Lloyd was dangling atop the edge of a building roof, Lundeen and associates were level with or slightly above Lloyd, just as perilously close to danger. Lundeen, however, besides being brave and courageous in his camera work, was extremely creative and thoughtful. He always plotted out his cinematography in terms of optimal benefit for the story. In Girl Shy, he mounted a camera within a manhole on Grand Avenue in downtown Los Angeles, creating an effect that was later used by B. Reeves' Greasy Eason when filming the chariot race scene in Ben-Hur in 1925. Walter Lundeen passed away on June 21, 1954, at the age of 62.